and I'm Heather and we're going batty and today we're going to teach you how we make our uh, strawberry preserves. Um, we do not put pectin in our strawberry preserves because uh, pectin a lot of times can add more sugar to it and I'm trying to limit the amount of sugar that my children have so I don't have to peel them off the ceiling. So I will show you how we make our strawberry preserves. All right, so the ingredients that you're gonna need for this are really, really simple. We have our strawberries that we picked yesterday from a local farm. Um, you're gonna need your sugar. You can use honey too. I've made this with honey. Um, you're gonna need Granny Smith apples. They need to be Granny Smith apples, and you're gonna need some lemon juice. And that's all that goes into this recipe. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to chop up our strawberries kind of coarsely. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in our food processor here. Because you do want, you know, your bits of um, your bits of strawberries in there. So uh, we're gonna not get them real, real, real small. take is we're going to take our Granny Smith apples with the peels on them and we're going to grate them. Um, the reason that we're doing that is because uh, they have natural pectin in them. So um, your, your, jam, your preserves won't be super thick like the ones you get in the grocery store but it will thicken it up and we like ours a little thinner anyway. It makes it easier to spread. We have our apple all grated up. <clears throat> now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna juice these lemons because we're gonna put lemon juice in it also. I put the lemon juice in with our apples here and now we're gonna put this in with our strawberries and just mix it up. The next thing that we're gonna add now is our sugar. And like I said, you can also, I've also made this with honey. You can use honey in it as well. that and we'll add more if we feel like it needs more. Um, I don't usually add as much sugar as most recipes call because we don't like our um, preserves super sweet. We, we like to be able to taste the strawberry in it. All right, so we're gonna mix our sugar and our apple and our lemon juice all together and we're gonna, I've got it on kind of a medium high heat right now but what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring this to a boil and um, with this much in this pot, it's probably gonna take a while. But um, the apple will actually kind of disintegrate down and you won't really see it anymore in there. So we're just gonna let this go um, for a while. I, it, again, it depends on how much you have in there, how long it's gonna take it to come to a boil. So I don't really have a specific time. Just, you know, keep your eye on it. Make sure it doesn't burn. Stir it so that it doesn't, um, doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. As you can see, it started boiling now. So um, just depending on the thickness of your jam that you want, um, you're gonna, and, and the amount that you're cooking, it can take anywhere from, if you're doing a smaller amount, like 10 minutes, you'll turn it down to a simmer, um, to anywhere up to like 45 minutes. Uh, just however thick you want your jam, um, you have to keep cooking it until it gets to that, that thickness. And that's kind of where you have to kind of decide what what thickness you want. Now the other thing that we've done is we have put 
our um, our water bath canner on the stove here and we're getting the water heated up so that uh, you don't want to put a cold jar into hot water and you don't want to put hot product into a cold jar so we have our um, jar sterilizing in the dishwasher right now um, so they'll be we'll pull them one by one out of the dishwasher and put the uh, jam in it and then put it into the hot water bath it smells really great in here right now and I'm going to show you oops um, our jam uh, it's thickened up quite a bit uh, it's reduced down you're gonna almost want it to reduce down almost by half but um, I'm gonna show you how to test to see if your jam is ready uh, to be put in your jars and how to know if it's going to set for you. All right, so what you're going to need to test to see if your jam is going to set for you is you're going to need a uh, dessert plate and you're going to need to put this in your refrigerator freezer for about five minutes. And then once you have it in there for five minutes, you'll pull it out. You'll put some of your jam on it and I'll show you how to do that. And then you'll put it back in the freezer for two more minutes. And that will tell you if your jam is going to set up. All right, so I've pulled our plate out of the freezer. I'm gonna take a little bit of our stuff. I'm gonna put it on our plate. And now I'm gonna stick it back in the freezer again and see if it sets up. All right, so if you look at our plate, it's still kind of runny, so it needs a little bit longer to cook. So I'm going to clean this plate off. I'm going to put it back in the freezer, and we're going to give it a try again. We're going to give it a little while longer, let this cook a little while longer, and we'll give it a try again. All right, so I'm going to show you right now, like if you run your finger through this, it doesn't go back really quickly at all in fact it's not going back at all it's going to take a really long time so this is ready and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it into our canning jars all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this off and i'm going to scoop this into my uh, jars here and i'm going to leave about i, I only fill them to about that you can see here that first line, I'll bring it up closer so you go, oh, it's hot, like right here to this line. That's where I fill them to, to give them enough head space so that they don't overflow when you put them into the, the, um, the canner. So I'm gonna take a lid, and then I'm gonna have the ring one. Thank you. We're gonna pull this out and we're gonna set our jars right in there in our canner. So I'm gonna continue filling the rest of these jars and then we'll show you what it looks like when everything's done. All right, we have this one full of half pint jars and we're actually gonna use this one here too. Now you can use a regular like stock pot but you have to have something in the bottom like um like the like an old like what we put in the bottom of ours is what you would use in a roasting pan where it kind of lifts it up a little bit or if you have any um actually i'll show you here let me grab this real quick if you look down in there if you see that because what you don't want is you don't want your jars rattling against the bottom of the pan um it can break your jars so and the other thing you want to do is you want to add just a little bit of vinegar, maybe about a quarter of a cup to your water and that will keep your jars from being cloudy on the outside. So this is what I had left after everything was said and done and as you can see, it's already starting to gel up and it's not, I mean, it's still pretty hot. Um, the other thing too, if you see in there, there's that foam. I do scrape the foam off of the top of my, my jam when it cooks. Um, some people don't do it. It doesn't make it taste any different. It just makes it look prettier when it goes in the jars. So I don't know if I said this before, but you're going to process these once it comes up to a boil. You're going to process them for 10 minutes and then pull them out. And then what you want to do is over here, if you look, I've got um, cloths. 
you want to set it on a um, a towel to cool and you're going to let them cool for 24 hours don't touch them so that way you know if they seal or not um, setting them on the towel is going to keep them from the cold counter cracking the bottom of your jars all right so here is our finished project we have 18 jars of strawberry preserves so that is our strawberry jam with no uh, powdered pectin in it so if you would like to make this yourself I will put the recipe in the description below and um, just like and subscribe if you have any questions please feel free to ask me and have a great day